So this is the time in our service that we get to celebrate communion, the Lord's Supper. And we take a a little piece of bread, in our case, a gluten-free cracker, and we take a little cup of juice, and we take the the bread and the juice, the the bread representing the Lord's body and, and the juice representing his blood that was shed at the cross. And we take these elements together corporately so that we can remember Christ and proclaim his death until he comes. Please follow along as I read in Psalm 103, starting in verse 8. Yahweh is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always contend with us, and he will not keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins and has not rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so Yahweh has compassion on those who fear him. For he himself knows our form. He remembers that we are but dust. While King David specifically here is talking about Israel, this morning as Christians, we get an opportunity to consider these truths in light of the cross. Verse 8 says that Yahweh is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. That's nearly a word-for-word quote of God's self-declared revelation of who he is from Exodus 34, 6. And God will only do that which aligns with his character. And here in our passage, God's loving, gracious, compassionate mercy is is demonstrated by what he hasn't done and what he has done. Verse 10 says, he has not dealt with us according to our sins and he has not rewarded us according to our iniquities. We are sinners. We've missed the mark. And according to God's holy standard, according to the holy standard of God's righteousness, we all fall woefully short. And in the courtroom of God, we are all found guilty. And our crimes, our guilt, require punishment. But in alignment with God's character, our merciful God has not punished and has not repaid us according to our sins. That's what he hasn't done. But what has he done? Verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Prior to God's gracious act being applied to us, we were joined to sin. We were inseparable from it. But God acted and he removed that sin from us. He separated that which was previously joined. How far apart did he separate us from our sin? As far as the east is from the west. These two cardinal directions carry out infinitely in opposite directions. There's an infinite separation between you and your sin. How does God do this? How can he be holy and right and just and still remove our sins from us? King David didn't provide those details here, but the prophet Isaiah did when he, speaking of God's exalted servant, said in Isaiah 53, 5, but he, the exalted servant, was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. God's exalted servant, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, went in place of sinners as their substitute. He was pierced through for their sins. He was crushed for their iniquities. But does this apply to everyone? Did God remove everyone's sin? Verse 11 says that, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. God's loving kindness is not applicable to all Israel. 
and it's not applicable to all mankind. God's loving kindness is reserved for those that fear him. Similarly, verse 13 says, as a father has compassion on his children, so Yahweh has compassion on those who fear him. Like God's loving kindness, God's compassion is reserved for those that fear him. Later in this psalm in verse 18, those that fear him are those that remember his word and do it. Fearing God is worshiping God with a reverence and awe that is demonstrated through obedience to him. God's loving kindness and compassion are only for those that fear God by trusting in Jesus Christ and his death at the cross for the removal of their sins. So the most important question you have before you this morning is, are you a God-fearer? Do you fear the Lord? Do you believe what the scriptures have revealed about your sin, the punishment due your sin, and the removal of your sin through Jesus, Christ, through Jesus Christ's death at the cross? If you would, by your own admission, say that you're not a God-fearer, then when the tray comes by, we just ask that you would simply pass it. This is a family time for those that do fear the Lord. And we are glad that you're here. We're glad that you get to listen to these truths. However, you do need to realize that your sins have not been removed and that a holy God will deal with you according to your sins. And he will repay you according to your rejection of him. But it doesn't have to be that way. Talk to me, talk to anyone of the other pastors, talk to the person who brought you. We would love to help you understand what it means to be a God-fearer, one that truly trusts in the Lord. Believer, nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ bore the wrath of the Father on the cross. Jesus was dealt with according to your sins. He was repaid according to your transgressions. And because of what he accomplished, you've been separated from your sin as far as the east is from the west. When your heart is prepared, go ahead and take communion on your own, and I will come back up to pray for us.